Hi there and welcome back to another video from Movie Mesh. I'm Mike and today I'm going to be talking about the Oscars that were just happened over this weekend and just discussing some of the main Oscar wins and what I thought and hopefully you can mention in the comments what you guys think as well. So let's get started. We will start with the Best Supporting Actress Award. Um, this was won by Yoon Yun Young Jung, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, for her role in Minari. I think Minari was a heavily tipped film, it was heavily nominated, uh, but I do think being a foreign language film and having had Parasite win so heavily last year that, that, that uh, it wasn't going to win a lot of the big awards and this was probably the award if any that it was going to win and it did so it wasn't a surprise to me this is probably also one of the awards where there wasn't really a huge outright favorite um, i think Olivia coleman her performance in the father from what i've heard because it hasn't been released here in the uk as of yet uh, is was very very good but the chances of winning two academy awards in a row is very slim it does happen tom hanks for example but it doesn't happen very often so yeah i think it was an expected award and it won moving on to supporting actor i was very pleased that a british winner won here in daniel kaluuya uh, I'd seen him previously in several films. I really liked Get Out and uh, Queen and Slim, which came out on Prime over here last year, and I really enjoyed. But I must admit, I thought his performance was more of a, a leading actor performance. So for him to win as a supporting actor, I actually wanted this award to go to Paul Racy, who, if you haven't seen it, his role in... Sound of Metal is, in my eyes, phenomenal, and he, he really was a standout supporting actor in that role in that movie. Um, so I would have liked to have seen him win for Sound of Metal. But, like I say, I'm still pleased that someone from the UK was there, and that I, I respect Daniel as an actor, and I, th I think he's a top talent, so congratulations. Moving on to Best Actress. I think this award, like the support and actress, was heavily, heavily tipped to go to Francis McDormand and did so. Uh, three wins from three Oscar nominations. That's a pretty good record now. Um, she's got some way to, to match nominations wise, the likes of Mel Streep. But as far as wins go, she's almost at the top of the pile. Only one person ahead of her on four wins. Um, do you know who that is? Comment below if you do know who that is. Uh, let's see if you're correct. So we move on to, let's move on to the best actor. Now this award is probably the biggest shock of the night, I would say. It was heavily, heavily tipped to be given as a posthumous Oscar to Chadwick Boseman for his role in uh, Ma Raimi's Bottom. Um, not a film that I've seen as of yet, to be honest, so I can't comment on, on how good his role was in that movie. But it, 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 was, it was a shock, and it went to Andy Hopkins for his role in The Father. As I've already stated, over in the UK, The Father hasn't had a release yet, and is scheduled for release in June. And I'm really, really excited to watch that film. The, the clips I have seen of the film and the clips I've seen of him in the film, I can totally understand why he's been... Oscar nominated and um, just as an actor I think he deserves more than the two Oscars he's received in his lifetime. Uh, he now is officially the oldest winner of an actor Oscar so congratulations to Sir Anthony Hopkins. Moving on to one of the big two awards of the night then in Best Director. Uh, I think there was only three people here that were going to walk away with the award I think one being David Fincher for Mank, uh, the other being Lee Chung for Minari, and then the eventual winner, which was Chloe Zhao for Nomadland. 
and I think it was in the lead up to the Oscars I think it was quite obvious that she was going to win I think as I've stated previously Mank just came out at the wrong time and I feel like the buzz it had late last year um, because of the, the lateness of the Oscars this year um, it had sort of run out of steam a little bit and just wasn't a contender for the big big awards and I couldn't see them giving one of the two big awards to a foreign language film as previously stated at two years in a row so for that reason it goes to close out for Nomadland. Then the last award, the last major award, which was Best Picture. Now all of these films on the list were great films um, and nominated in their own right. Um, Nomadland obviously won. I'm looking forward to seeing it. It's been released on Friday the 30th of April, so it's just been released. Um, here in the UK on Disney Plus, so I'll be looking forward to checking it out real soon. Um, I was surprised that Judas and the Black Messiah didn't get the win. I think that was probably the film that was closest, that or Sound of Metal, um, to possibly pipping Nomadland to the Oscar. Uh, I don't think Mank or Minari, as I've said, were real contenders. Um, and Trial of Chicago 7 and Promising Young Woman. I don't quite think Trial of the Chicago 7 was on the same level as some of the other films in these in this category. And as much as I love Promising Young Woman, I, it's not the sort of film that I can see the Academy giving best picture to. So for that reason, um, it wasn't a surprise or a shock to see Nomadland come out winner. So just some honorary mentions, just some small, smaller awards here. It was nice to see that Promising Young Women did pick up an award with the original screenplay. Um, another award goes for Brit as well, which is, which is great. Um, the adapted screenplay, The Father picked up its second award for that. Um, the animated feature, um, not a surprise or a shock, I don't think to many people, went to Seoul. Uh, is that becoming a bit of a Pixar category? Um, I mean, it's been going now, I think, the anime feature for possibly 10 years. And I think, apart from a few notable exceptions, the likes of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, it's pretty much been dominated by Pixar. Um, what do you guys think? Do you think it should be renamed the Pixar Award? Um, or do you think there are going to be other studios and other films made that can actually rival Pixar in this category? Or will they just keep picking up award after award? Let me know in the comments below. It was nice to see Tenet get an award. Um, I personally saw Tenet in the cinema last year, last July. It was the first film released after lockdown here in the UK when the cinema was reopened for a brief period. And it's one of only two films in the last year that I've seen in the cinema, along with Wonder Woman 1984. So uh, at the time I thought Tenet would probably sweep the awards because I didn't, I couldn't see many other releases being made. but. Um, with the advent of, of the way that streaming services picked up a lot of these films and got them out there and got them to people to actually view, um, there were a lot better films come out, if I'm honest. As much as I liked Tenet, they, I think the films that were nominated were worthy, but it was nice to see Tenet pick up an award because I do think it was a good film, that one for visual effects. Um, and then, um, live, as quick mention for the live action short, um, I don't know if you've seen it, but the winner was actually a film that was on Netflix. It's only a 30 minute film because it is a short. It's called Sh Two Distant Strangers. Uh, it's, the, the plot is very, very heavily based on a lot of the things that are going on in the news at the moment um, over in America. Um, it's, I, I urge you to, to watch it. Um, I think I can totally see why the Academy gave the award to this film. Um, like I say, it's very much in the public eye at the moment, the subject matter of this film. And um, yeah, for, for some people it might be a little, a little eye opener on what is going on over there in America. So yeah, check out Two Distant Strangers if you fancy watching a little uh, 30 minute short that won the Oscar this year. So uh, overall, um, there wasn't any big winner at the Oscars this year. Uh, Nomadland won the most, the most Oscars with three, and then the likes of the the Father and Mank and Judas and the Black Messiah 
they came up with uh, two wins each. So there wasn't um, many films really that, that dominated at this Academy Awards. Um, in regards to the Best, best Picture nominees, um, they're mostly available here in the UK on some subscription services or or streaming services. The likes of Nomadland, like I've said, is on Disney Plus um, right now. Judas and the Black Messiah and Minari are both on uh, pay TV, so you'd have to pass a as a prime rental, like a fifteen ninety nine rental. Uh, and I think it's a similar price on the likes of the Google Play Store or the Apple Store. Um, Promising Young Woman's on Sky and Now TV. Sound of Metal is on Prime if you're a Prime subscriber. And Mank and the Trial of the Chicago Seven is both on Netflix. So you can you can see most of these films um, either on subscription or with a couple of exceptions having to pay for it as a as a as a a Prime um, purchase. So. Just going to sort of summarise here, are we seeing a new trend here in, in movies at the Oscars? It seems these streaming studios, to me, a couple of years ago, I wouldn't have thought they would be dominating the way they, they are starting to. Um, you know, you, you look back, if you're going back a few years, the likes of Manchester by the Sea, which was an Amazon Studios production, done very well. You've got the likes of Roma, um, Obviously, we've got Mank this year, Minari, um, The Trial of Chicago 7, all streaming studios films. Um, and although Nomadland was released in the cinemas and isn't technically, a, wasn't produced to go on a streaming service, although it is owned by Disney and they've released it on their service, um, it's becoming more and more that these streaming studios are, have got films being made by them that are actually competing for the top top awards. What do you guys think? Do you think this is going to continue? Do you think they will monopolise these these going forward, or do you think the the other major studios like Warner Brothers um, will come back and can actually offer a, some competition for for the likes of Amazon and Netflix? So yeah, um, comment below what, what what your thoughts are on that. Um, Thanks for watching. Like I say, let me know what you think about all the all the winners and the nomination and the, the nominees. Um, did the right person win? Um, what did your favourite win? Was you really disappointed in any way with the Oscars this year? Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, and until next time, see you soon.